I'm a contributing editor at Screen International, and I'm thrilled to be hosting this chat with Sophia today. Very specifically, the, it, it never really says she's got Asperger's or, or not. Um, we know that she's a little socially inept. Um, I mean, how, did you talk to the writers about whether it was Asperger's, or did you research? Do some other research about? Yeah, I did research research about Asperger's, mm. and uh, and we said me and the the writer that she has Asperger's, but she's never been diagnosed. I think she's been smart, smart enough to avoid uh, being diagnosed. And since she comes comes from a very dysfunctional family to begin with, uh, I think the mother has made hasn't made an effort to to try to help her either. So she, she found her, find, finds her own way. Yeah. And I think if you just read it sort of flat on page, the, you know, her dialogue, her actions, yeah. I think, you know, reads so cold. But I think there is, we care for her. Um, and so how did you make her human despite her sort of quirks? I have, yeah, I have one thing that I keep saying to myself, and that is she, she wants to be loved. Hmm. She doesn't want to be alone. She wants to be loved always. That's my direction. Hmm. So, uh, and I think maybe that mixed up with her being so unable to communicate with other people, hmm. that makes people feel empathy for her hmm. maybe. Yeah. Um, and I've heard, especially in Denmark, that, um, or Danish, Swedish in this case, on, on shows that the writers are very open to listening to what the actors yeah. Say. So how have you helped develop, develop this character over the two series so far and, and the third one coming up? Yeah, me and Hans, uh, the writer, we have had a fantastic work together and uh, we, it's been more and more mm. developed during the seasons and we have had meetings in betweens and have shared ideas mm. and I come with suggestions and he comes with suggestions mm. and we, yeah, so it's really... A lovely uh, way of working mm. together with him. And what about when you're actually shooting? Are you, do you have time to sort of try out different things or different lines, or is it you've got to just get this scene done today and we move on? We rehearse before. Every day we start one hour in before and we rehearse. And then I uh, also go through the script many, many times yeah. before and, and change things. And yeah. But the, the goal is to be, everything's to be ready when you shoot, because mm. you, we have to shoot so fast, yeah. so much. Yeah. And how do you work with Kim Bodnia, who plays Martin? How, what was, when did you first meet him before you even started shooting on the first day? Did you, did you and him yeah. sort of do a lot of preparation? Yeah, we, we rehearsed before, mm. and uh, uh, then, yeah, we worked, worked very good together, mm. quite not instantly, but after a while. And he was very patient with mm. me because he could see that I was looking for this character and I was very insecure at the beginning. But then I said to the director, Charlotte mm. Sealing, that I'm doing something I've never done and I don't know if it's good, but I'm going to do it all the way and see if it works. Okay, she said, feel free. Mm -hmm. so, and he saw that and he had patience with me. And I think he developed his character by this patience mm. in one way. Because he, he looks at my character, Martin Rohde looks at my character with much love. Mm. So that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, Martin has to be patient with Sega as well. Yeah, I guess. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, this is quite a physical role at times. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you enjoy, the sort of running and action side of it? Not no. always, but no. No. <laughs> it doesn't interest me at all. <laughs> I'm interested in characters yeah. and psychology and what happens between people and uh, things like that. I no. wouldn't, I mean, I do do it most of the things myself, but mm. My goal in life is not to, to do as much stunt as I can. That's nothing I'm <laughs> That's impressed not you. by. Okay. No, it's not me. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, we, we love seeing these great female characters on screen, but if there's ever any criticism of them, it's like, oh, you know, the women have to be quite damaged. You know, Sarah Lund is a weirdo. Sega's got her issues. 
Kerry Matheson on Homeland is, you know, got mental problems. I mean, did that bother you that she is quite different and she's not just a sort of just a strong woman. She's a strong woman with a lot of, of but who issues. Is different? Yeah. Who is there any normal person in this room? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not. No. no. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, yeah, it might be very interesting to play a really normal person. It might be really boring to watch, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Boring to watch, yes. You just go home, you cook dinner, you go to bed, nah. I no. think the question is asked because you're so used to see undeveloped female characters mm -hmm. in, on screen. So when they have something that is interesting, or everyone says, like, Oh, why does she have to be so special? Yeah. Yeah. Special is not a bad word, I guess. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's great. Mm. <laughs> um, and can you tell us anything about season three? I know somebody's yeah. going to ask, so it might as well be me. Yeah, I can tell you that you will see more from Saga and more, and you will get to know her more, and you will get to know more about her past and you will meet her mother. Ooh. And she is not a nice person at all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So is season three, all of it has been shot already? Yeah. Yeah. Just, I finished two weeks ago. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you think the audience, is there any sort of big surprises with where it goes, or? Yes. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. will be surprises. OK. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not going to tell us, this, ruin the surprise, mm -hmm. I guess. Can I tell yeah. you more? It's about, we have a kind of theme for every season. And this year, it's, the theme is families and different family, how family can look like. Because mm. at least in, in Sweden, families, they look really different today than mm. like 30 years ago. Yeah. For instance, in my, my daughter's uh, childcare kindergarten, they have she has a, a, a boy. He's got three dads and one mom. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try to do the math uh, on that, but that's great. Like, More people who love a kid, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it, does it feel like the emphasis is more on Saga this, this season? Uh, does Martin make any appearance or? No, he's no. in jail, so okay. what, what can she do? She can't start hanging out with, with a murderer. Yeah. She can't. Yeah. So, and it's hard for her, because she misses him. But on the other hand, she's rational, and she realizes, no, she can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Looking back from when we first meet her actually on the bridge um, to where she is now, how would you say the character has evolved? I mean, she's obviously tried to have a boyfriend and yeah. things like that. Now, she failed so badly last season. Mm -hmm. So now she's on the, in, I think she's kind of, yeah, she, she's accepted that she's going to be alone. Okay. In, yeah, very sad. Okay. Yeah. Any one night stands or anything for her? No? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I think, I mean, Malmo is not a big city. And yeah. she's, <laughs> and she walks around on different bars. She's, I think she's famous now. Yeah. Around the bars, yeah. yeah. Um, so she's got problems. And she will try to solve them in an interesting way. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I did, on a serious note, want to talk about this character's sexuality and her relationships and you know I sort of love that scene in I think it's episode two of season one where she goes into the bar and the guy says can I buy you a drink she said no mm. but let's go to my place and have sex okay um, and then you know in season two we obviously see her trying to have a, a boyfriend and it still doesn't quite work and you know, I just think it's a quite an honest portrayal of you know She's allowed to have a one-night stand, just like anybody, any man would be on mm. screen. I mean, was that scene at all controversial when it aired, especially in Denmark or Sweden? I, I think it seems it's more controversial here than yeah. in Sweden. Okay. Some, one woman, in, one, one woman uh, came up to me in Sweden 
And she was really upset and said, no, no woman would do what like that, what she does. But she was also like 60 or something. But, but in, in, you know, it's not a very controversial thing. Okay. No. Good. Were you sort of proud of, of those moments for her, that she sort of embraces what she wants? I think that's good, but it's also good to eat when you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, and what part of the show's success do you think is because it is both Swedish and Danish? It was, you know, the first time we've seen it quite like this. Um, and I find it fascinating. And I love the sort of little moments of, you know, Martin will bring Danish bread um, because the Danish, Swedes like the Danish bread or, or, you know, these little local touches. I mean, how, how was that working on the Danish side and the Swedish side? and? We are working less and less with that yeah. thing. Um, and for me as an actor, it's nothing that I can do s so much with. Okay. It's, it's more, I don't know. It doesn't interest me so much. Mm -hmm. But as a Swedish actress, are, are you happy to work with Absolutely. the Danish side? And have, do you yeah, cross over a lot with? With Danish work or do you want to? Yeah, right now I'm doing a Danish film and uh, I, I mean we work a bit differently but still we understand each other and I think we are standing on our toes in front of one another because we admire their work and they admire mm. our work mm. so that's good for yeah. the dy dyna mm. dynamics yes. I think. And are you at all surprised about, I mean we've got hundreds of people here on a sunny Sunday. Yes. People are obsessed with this show. Mm. Has, did that, the international success, did that surprise you at Absolutely. all? Absolutely, mm. of course. And do you have any idea why it's been so popular? Uh, yeah, it's, we have, I mean, the, the killing made you see it, so we already had some work been done before yeah. we started, mm. but uh, obviously you you are interested in our country and mm. and, and uh, our culture and about these stories. Mm. But the bridge is also uh, done very with very high qualities, mm. and uh, yeah, that's yeah. mixed together. It's also maybe a strong script, a strong characters. Yeah. It's not just a novelty. I think it's no, the quality. No, it's not by chance. Yes, yeah. it's been mm -hmm. good. And I, I think it's really interesting because especially with the bridge, there's this whole backdrop of sort of politics and social unrest and the environment. And mm. were you drawn to all those aspects of what the show is saying? Of course, it's good when, when you try to point at problems that are yeah. important to solve. Although, I mean, this is entertainment. Yeah. But of course, it's good if you think something important during the way. Hmm. Have there been any scenes that have been particularly hard to film? Like I'm thinking in the, the climax of season one, you know, when Martin's yeah. in the shootout. I mean, it just looks so tough. Yeah, it was, was tough. That, yeah. We were underneath the bridge. It was so cold. I'm very afraid of heights. Oh. And the floor was, it was just a net. So it felt like I was going to fell fall down all the time. I remember those days as very long and cold and hard. Yeah. Yeah. And emotionally as well. I mean, just when he's asking if his son is alive or dead and mm. uh, your performance is, is heartbreaking. Was it, did it feel really emotional or are you able to sort of just act? No, I never just act. Yeah. Then I would, wouldn't want to do this, yeah. I think. Good. Um, and this season, which I just finished, uh, was, has been the hardest one in that ex aspect. Uh, it is, it is uh, of course, it's, it, it affects you. Yeah. But I, I chose this work, work, so. Yeah. And is it weird doing it without Kim, without Martin? Uh, as we made the decision, I, it was hard and it, and painful because I really like him, but for the series, it's, it was the best mm. thing that could happen because 
how how would we go keep go going on with, with what happened i mean you can't just ignore what he did mm. so hard but really really good okay. and for you as an actress uh, Saga has become, you know, a part of you, I guess, you know, just working with a character for several years. Um, are, are you scared when it's going to end? Are you going to be happy to move to something else now? How do, how do you feel about maybe letting go one day of, of Saga? Uh, since I'm working with something else now, directly after we stopped shooting, I don't know, I, I am always relieved when it's done. And it's not, I, I mean, it's a lot of fun sometimes, but it's quite painful to be her for such a long time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm relieved, mm. yeah. Yeah. Um, in season three, uh, are the leather trousers still? They are still there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, did you have any input in, into the wardrobe, or that was decided before you showed up? No, or, yeah. we, we made it together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, well, maybe, I mean, the, the leather trousers are her Sarah Lund jumper, you know, so mm. what do they, do you think they say something about her that she's, you know, she's a cop, but she's not wearing the uniform quite? Yeah, I... I'm motivated by, yeah, they are practical, both when it's warm and cold, mm. and they last for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And um, I want to ask about her car yeah. as well. Um, yeah. how is, what is that like to actually to drive? Horrible Do you get to, to drive. Horrible to drive, yeah. okay. It's really hard to drive, and it's... Uh, uh, and it's not very com you know good to sit in or okay. it's cold and yeah. It's, yeah but it looks so cool yeah good <laughs> it's it was already there when i when i got the job okay. so i had no choice and yeah i just had to decide that she was really into porsche for a long period so yeah because Asperger people they get into things okay really focused on one period yeah i understand and I love that it's not a sort of flashy red. It's a, well, it's a sort of olive yeah. green. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I thought I might see if there are any questions yet for Sophia. Uh, there's one in the middle aisle. Thank you. If we can get a mic. Hi. It's a question really about the use of language. I mean, when we watch the bridge, uh, you know, we would like to say, hey, tuck. But we don't actually know which side of the bridge we're on because most of us can't speak very much of, of either language. I just wondered, because it's such a close playing in the first two seasons, was that difficult working with somebody who's not got the same first language? Did you, do you and Kibodnia rehearse it more fully or was there something different about getting that interplay across actually, the languages? Yeah, actually it was hard to understand him to begin with. Uh, and that was frustrating, but it helped me also to get into the part since she doesn't understand people and people don't understand her. So it was hard, but good. But now I understand any Danish okay. after these years. <laughs> okay, was there another question either upstairs or downstairs yet? We've got one in the second row. Hello. Um, you say that in the third series that Saga tries to overcome her social issues, but is there any chance she's going to find true love? Hmm. Maybe in some way, <laughs> sometime. I don't know. But maybe not in season no. three. <laughs> I think there's another question in the front row over this side. Um, hi. hi. Ha, have you done much theatre work? Yes, yeah. I have. Did you start off in theatre and then move yes. into film? Yeah. Exactly, yes. Just in Sweden or...? Yeah, just yeah. in Sweden. I did theatre one year ago in Stockholm. Oh. Oh. 
It was lovely. And do you find a real difference between working on the stage and then working in film? Yeah, it's different technically and it's different uh, uh, preparations for it. But the, the work to, uh, to do with character is the same. Thank do you. you. Thank do you enjoy you. that sort of live aspect of the of the theater and being there with an audience? Yeah, when when it's something that I want to tell a, a, an audience, yeah. I I can do it in any way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Mm. And I guess film compared to to TV, what what would you say? Do you prefer one or the other, or like to sort of mix of both? I mean, TV now is so much bigger and more interesting in that way that you can develop a character for such a long time. Uh, but again, the story is the important thing, that I want to be part of this story and tell you about this character. Mm. And can you tell us anything about the film that you're doing next? Is it anything crime? It's, or? Yeah, it's a science, a science fiction movie. Okay. About uh, someone who travels back from the future and in the future it's uh, the the earth is damaged by salt because of the environmental damages mm -hmm. so he and and i'm a, a, a surgeon for water so yeah it's really interesting, interesting. about okay. environment okay yeah and do you like sci-fi are you a fan no, not like a normal. I, I, I don't have a genre that I prefer, right. or it would be drama, but, yeah. but uh, if it's a good sci-fi movie, mm. I, I don't care. Like I saw Gravity the other year, it was fantastic. Mm. It can, can have a part of a existential thing that I really like mm. in sci-fi. And sort of environmental issues, is that something you're passionate about in real life? Yeah, Pooh, I try not <laughs> to think about it too much. I mean, I try to think about it like what I do, mm. but you can't almost, I mean, this is, is destroying the environment. <laughs> and, and, and this, the lightings and everything, we can't do one, anything almost now yeah. without destroying the environment. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it's important. I think it's important, of course, as everybody thinks, mm. I hope. But I don't know what to do. Yeah. I'm frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll recycle that can, at least. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, we're also going to see my great grand, mm. my grandchildren in the future in this movie, and that makes it almost more scary. Yeah. 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 You, you can't think about it too much. Yeah. <laughs> Is there another question? There's another question downstairs. And if anybody upstairs wants to ask one, please make yourself known. Uh, we've got one here, and then we'll come to the gentleman back there. Um, I think I can speak for everyone in the audience to say that you are perceived as a brilliant actress in a fantastic series. Thank um, you. Having, having, having said that, um, Obviously, your trade or your work is as an actor. Do you find it difficult to put aside the stardom and the fame and concentrate on the, the work of being an actor? Mm, no, because in Sweden and Scandinavia, people don't approach you in the street. They leave you pretty much alone, and we don't have any paparazzi or anything. And here, if I'm going abroad, I mean, it, someone can speak to me sometimes but never in a bad way and I'm I'm happy to be quite left alone so I don't suffer from that at all was that weird at all when people started recognizing you at least even if they're not coming up I think you can feel it in a room if everybody's sort of oh yeah that's but the new thing in, in Scandinavia in Sweden I was already known no. for some things and and here uh, for instance, during this weekend, it, just, it was just one person at the airport mm. who came up to me. So, I mean, and that doesn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't feel recognized at okay. all. I think it, it might help, but you don't quite look like 
saga. It's really yeah. weird, so, you know, yeah. being this close, and it's not, yeah. Yeah. It's not the character here. No. Yeah. Question upstairs? Oh, great question upstairs, please. Uh, hi. Um, hi. Is there going to be a fourth series of a bridge, and what can you tell us about it? I, I don't know. Nobody knows, and uh, it has to be a really good story because I, 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 I have told so much about Saga during this season that I've just done. So. I, I mean, I wouldn't do Saga just to do Saga. I need to have a good, good story to tell. Otherwise, why should I do it? So, no one knows. <laughs> and can you tell us anything about the case or cases she's looking at in season three? Is yeah. Hmm. The case is big in a... Mm, can I tell you anything about the case? Do I remember the case? <laughs> uh, yes, I do, of course. But no, no, it's hard to tell you without spoiling anything. Yeah. Okay. We'll w we'll wait and see. And there's a guy on the sort of third row from the back. And Hi. You Hi. you mentioned um, that each uh, season has had a theme and that the theme of season three is, is family. What were the perceived uh, themes of seasons one and two, and how did they develop? Yeah, first season was about... One of them was about environment, if I don't... Mm, and the other one I already forgot. I have to think about it for like ten minutes before I remember it, I think. I'll tell you if I... <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah, last, the second season was, we had like a theme about the environment. Yeah. But in the end, it, it was more about sex than environment, we figured out afterwards <laughs> when it was finished. But, yeah. Can you tell us who plays your mother in season three? Yeah, uh, it's a big actor in Sweden. She's called Anne Petrin. She's done so many fantastic uh, characters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, it was my first instant choice. And so it was a good experience working with her? Absolutely. Yeah. It's my second time I worked with her and it was, yeah, interesting. Okay. Cool. Was there another question out there? Yep. There's one question in the upstairs. Question upstairs. And then we'll come to the front room. Hi. Uh, uh, Hi. Uh, have there been particular actors uh, or directors who've influenced your work, or inspired your work over the years? Yes, I am a big fan of Kate Blanchett. I think she's fantastic in the way she transforms into people. That's, that's interesting to look at and uh, I think interesting to do for an actor as well. Yeah, so I admire her a lot. Yeah. I just saw her new film, Carol yeah. and Can, yeah. and it's stunning. Yeah. Mm. But no, I think she, like you, she's using interesting characters you know, yeah. as well. So, mm. When you read a script, what do you, I mean, is it sort of in a big package that you can't separate, that you might want to work with a director or this writer or this character, or is yeah. it just on the page that you like what you're reading? Uh, it's both. Uh, it's everything mixed together, of course, but it's always about if my fantasy starts going in my yeah. head, things and what I, yeah, then I can't stop myself from doing it. Yeah. So you're sort of very visual when you start reading? Not visual. Not visual, I, just... Just thoughts and feelings and, and what I could bring into it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. A uh, question in the front? Your role is very intense and uh, when you're filming and you come home, are you able to leave Sabra at the front door. Yeah, the, the thing is, I'm not at home when I shoot. I shoot four days a week away from my family. So that in that sense, it's easy to separate. It's like two worlds that I'm living in two separate worlds. Uh, um, 
but I, I try to leave her instantly when I go from work. And it's good, because I undress and then I'm not her anymore. But of course, since I have to rehearse by myself at home in my hotel room, I am her many, many hours a day. And when you're on a sort of lunch break, do you sort of stay in character? No, or no? during my lunch break, I always try to to relax, meditate, and uh, you get know, some you lunch. know, get some lunch, <laughs> of course, but yeah. try to focus. Yeah. Was there any other? Oh, there's another question in the front here. Um, hi. Um, do you enjoy all of this? Yes. <laughs> the questions and the answers and the whole. Yeah, you do. Yeah. This is. I mean, uh, uh, this is so meaningful to to meet people that we are telling the story to. Uh, that's what it's all about. And it's easy to forget if you never meet the audience. And uh, so it's fantastic to meet you. Yeah. Good. And the second one. Could I just ask um, two things, basically? One is, um, or two comments. When it comes to the theme music, I think that is the most fantastic piece of music I've heard for a long time. And mm. I think it's a great choice for the show. On the second point, with the name of the bridge and what you're saying about Martin, because Martin's in jail, are you still having this cooperation across into Denmark with the police stories, or is it moving more sw Swedish? No, we, we do work together, Denmark and Sweden. You have to repeat the first question. I already forgot it. Just about Actually, the music. It wasn't a question. It was, I, th I, think, I think the choice of the music for the ah, soundtrack yeah, yeah, is absolutely yeah. fantastic. I also anyway. like the music. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's still Danish Swedish very much. And I read the other day that they had to close the bridge and Swedish and Danish policemen were out on the bridge and so it happens all the time that they have to work together for real as well because uh, the region is quite tight. Okay, there's a, another question there. Hello. Hi. Um, can I ask how you felt about the ending of season two? Yeah, very sad, of course. Very, very sad. Uh, <clears throat> and again, someone lies to her and leaves her. Very sad. Mm. Question from upstairs. Okay, okay. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wondered if uh, Danish and Swedish, Swedish audiences' perception of the bridge is different. Do they see it differently? Than you, here uh, in England? No, in, uh, the oh, Danes versus oh, the Swedes. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. And also, I suppose, international audiences' perception is quite marked and different to Danes and Swedes? Uh, I don't think the, think the audience is different in Sweden and Denmark so much. I think they're quite similar. Uh, I noticed that you're more uh, interesting, interested in the, the thing that she's a woman and she is strong and she's doing what she wants, that you're interested in that more here than in Scandinavia. But otherwise, it's hard for me to tell, because mm. I don't meet you so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't go over to Copenhagen to watch on a... No. No. <laughs> um, we have time for one or two more questions. Um, maybe this gentleman in the gray and then somebody, th that guy. Um, I read somewhere that the Swedish police had recently reorganized its organizational structure, and this might have to be uh, um, uh, reflected in the show. So is uh, Save, she still lends Malmö? Yes, oh, good. she is. <laughs> OK, Malmö safe. Um, yeah, this guy out there, please. Hi. Have you ever been approached um, to uh, work in the West End in a play, ever? Uh, no, not yet. You should, you should do. Yeah. 
The other question is, do you ever drive across the bridge? Uh, if I ever driven ever across, the, across bridge? the bridge? Very often. I mean, not in my private life, but as Saga, I do. <laughs> All the time. But not, not, it'd be rather weird seeing you driving across <laughs> there. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, there's a lady behind that we have time for another quick one. Hello. Um, in this new series, and the other two series were the central relationship between you and Martin. In the new series, is it more just about you then, or will you have a new partner, as it were? Yes, yeah, she will try to have a partner again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And a really quick one from the patient gentleman there. It, sorry to come back in. It's just a quick one about you're, you're not from Malmo. Uh, I just wondered if you researched the town, because the town seems quite important in, as a background to the series. Yeah, I, just, I used to live in the town just uh, very, very close to Malmo. So I knew the region from before. And I, I wanted to speak uh, Skånish, which is how they speak down there. But, but the the director, she said no, and the, the producers as well, since it's Danish and then Swedish in a sort of Danish way, it would be so confusing for the Swedish audience. So therefore I speak uh, like in Stockholm. Thanks very much. Thanks. Um, and I'll just wrap up by asking, um, obviously your English is perfect. Do you, would you like to be on Downton Abbey or? Any of our English shows? Maybe we can get a deal here today? Yeah, I'm, I would be happy to work here, absolutely. Yeah. I, I even spoke to my husband to move here, about moving here. Uh, I feel London is, uh, it's more mixed up. People seems, it seems more multicultural mm. in a nice way. Yeah. And it, like in Sweden, it's all very much separated. And, and here it feels, a little bit more free. I don't know why, because we are free, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm just uh, tempted to move here. But, and, and I had some, not, yeah, they have contacted me, but I've never been able to do things okay. since I didn't under bridge so much. Okay, well, come on over. Yeah. I think we'd love that, so Good. thank you. Thank Sophia. you.